Hi YouTube and uh, welcome to another vacuum review uh, from me, Steve, and uh, today we're going to be looking at uh, another Vax model. Um, this machine is the uh, Vax Zoom. It is um, an Argos exclusive machine that uh, is currently selling for around the region of the uh, 60 to 70 pound mark and uh, as, as we speak at the moment you can actually pick some uh, models of this up for less than 60 pounds so it's very much a budget cleaner this one and uh, having used it for a while I've actually come to the conclusion that it's not a bad machine not a bad machine at all for the money it has got a few little uh, things that I didn't like but that will be uh, talked about as the review goes along. So this is the bagless uh, upright. Um, it is a single cyclonic separation machine which means uh, basically that you need to do slightly more filter maintenance on it. Um, that it's rated at uh, 1800 watts so it's going to be one of these machines that uh, has to have a, um, a makeover. I believe this is being relaunched again in the new in the new catalogue as the uh, Impact 504 range. Um, the uh, 702 is the top of the range, which is the old uh, floor to floor. The Impact. Uh, 504 I think this one's going to become will be the old uh, zoom range and then uh, I think there's one that's lower down than that but I'm um, not quite sure about that one all will become clear after September when the new rules uh, from the EU come in regarding uh, energy efficiency because uh, as we speak it's caused an awful lot of changes in the vacuum world in uh, the United Kingdom at the moment Whereas the uh, bureaucrats at the EU have uh, decided that, well, quite rightly so, being quite honest, because far too many machines were getting too powerful. So I do agree with a lot of what they've done. But uh, it's caused the manufacturers a fair bit of work to have to modify machines to uh, come within the rules. And this is another machine that uh, will be in excess of the maximum allowed wattage as it's currently um, 1800 watts. Now, the, the Zoom comes in four colours originally. Um, this one is the Zoom Pet. It also came in uh, an apple green colour, which was the base model. It also comes in a uh, psychedelic purple colour, which is the Reach model. And it also comes in a sky blue colour, which is the uh, Pets and Family, which is the top of the range one. Um, they're all basically exactly the same machine. Uh, the only difference that the differences is is in the length of the cable, the length of the hose, the accessories that you get, um, and the machine's motor power. Now, the base model and the pet model, like this, if I just check on the rating plate, I'm sure it is uh, an 1800 watt, yes it is, but uh, I believe that the Reach model and the uh, Pets and Family were higher wattage motors still, I think they were 2000, 2100 watts, so again those models will also have to be replaced with lower wattage motors and it will be very interesting to see what happens come September when all these uh, low wattage motors machines hit the market and see what people say about them because uh, I think it's going to come as somewhat of a shock to a lot of people that are used to powerful machines like this. All of a sudden, they're going to get taken away and replaced by uh, A-rated energy, which a lot of machines now are going to end up being 700 watts. So what they've done is gone from one extreme to the other. But for the purposes of this review, we're talking about this model here, which uh, if I look at the code on the back, to give you the model number is U87ZMP. Now what's the most striking thing about this machine is the colour. This is an absolutely blancmange pink machine. It really is as pink as you, as you can see. 
Uh, I got some funny looks in our house when I went and bought this and they put it on the counter because on the box it says cleaning for busy mums. So uh, this really is supposed to be a vacuum cleaner aimed at women, not men. But me being a vacuum cleaner collector, I had to have an example of one of these for the collection and uh, they were going at special offer at the time when I bought it. So uh, it was a very good price quite honest because when these launched the prices were much higher. So the accessory it comes with comes with the uh, three in one tool. Unfortunately on this machine it doesn't have anywhere to store it. On other machines you can usually clip it on in there but for some reason Vax didn't put a uh, tool clip on to store the three in one tool. It comes with also on the handle here, pet hair turbo brush, and uh, that, okay, whoops, just dropped it there. What I did find on this one, the uh, first time I used it, one of the, uh, the lint pickers along the front here came off straight away. There's only one remaining on the back there now, if I just bring this up to the camera. You can see there, that for the pet hairs it's supposed to have the, um, the lint pickers. And there was one there, but with the first use, the glue completely came undone and it dropped off. So uh, I wasn't really very impressed with that. But they're not an essential part of a turbo tool. And it works just as well without those lint pickers, being quite honest. It's the actual spinning brush that does the work. This one, just like the other ones, you can uh, disassemble it like so, clean it. These really are very, very useful tools to have turbo brush. They make cleaning furniture. If you've got pets that jump all over the furniture, especially cats, and when they're molting, your sofa will get covered in pet hair. As I'm sure many people know, it's a problem. If you wear dark clothes and you're going to sit on the sofa and your white cat's been on there and you get up and you're absolutely covered in white fur, that is what makes one of these tools very, very invaluable. Which is why I normally, when I buy these machines, I usually go for the pet version or the one that includes the turbo tool. Some of them will have uh, a special type of filter, which is carbon in, to kill pet odours, but uh, this machine doesn't. It has a standard filter, which I'll be talking about in a bit. So we'll put the... The nice thing about this is that they thought about having the, uh, the storage for this on the machine, like so, but then they didn't put any storage for that, which I, I, I found that very, very, very strange because on the Air 3 and on the Air model they usually clip it here on the back and there is space for it to go there so I just can't understand why they never put an accessory holder there for it because when they, when they don't attach to the machine they get lost and that's the trouble so if we uh, take the hose off here, I'll just unwind the cable first because what I tend to do is uh, tend to have the cable wrapped around the top of here, so I'll just get the cable off it first. It's, um, I think it's an 8 metre cable on this one. It's, uh, it's not the shortest, it's not the longest. If you want to go on with a longer cable on, you get the reach model. And that comes with 10 metres of cable. But the pet version doesn't have that. It has a slightly shorter cable, and uh, the green base model has a short cable as well. But the pets and family, and the reach, versions of this will both come with the 10 metre cable. I'm not sure what the impact series is going to be when that comes out, so I'll have to keep an eye on the Argos catalogue to see what they're going to do. But one thing you do notice about the new machines is that uh, the new rules will state that uh, retailers don't have to specify the input wattage for the motor anymore. They only have to uh, specify what energy rating it is from a scale of A to G. Now, knowing what I know about how the rules are going to work, the uh, category A is usually for machines of 700 watts and under. I mean, when the new Henry comes out, the pneumatic Henry, that's going to have a 585 watt motor in. Um, and that will be classified as a grade A, category A energy efficiency. I mean, it's all very well, everything being grade A energy efficient, but vacuum cleaners, they need, they need to have a certain amount of power to be able to pick all the dirt up properly. And uh, if all they're doing is taking previous models 
like this that were designed to have 1800 watt motors in and then just stick in a 700 watt motor in it without modifying anything else I am very sceptical about how that machine is going to perform but as I said in another video that I did it costs an awful lot of money for a company to develop a new model and um, this machine and a few others in the VAX range have not been running all that long so really they couldn't afford to bring out an entire new range with low wattage motors in so I, I guess it's going to be a case of watch this space over the next few years as uh, things pan out and we see see how things occur because nobody knows yet how good these 700 watt machines are going to be and uh, what's going to be the result of all this so the cable as with so many other axe machines comes out of the bottom on this machine and uh, VAX don't provide a cord hook. Some machines they do, some machines they don't. Uh, but on this one, because it has the pet air turbo brush, it's very easy just to wrap it up to the top and bring it over the top of there. And that keeps the cord nice out of the way. Some models that don't have the turbo brush, the base model, that would just come essentially like this. You just have the, the stalk, the, the handle, like that, and then you have to wrap the cable around this part. There's one thing I cannot abide by is cables that come right out the bottom. It just gets in the way as you're trying to use the machine. I don't like it. So some kind of cable hook on here. If you're going to do that, really it's necessary to keep the cable out of the way. When, when the machine comes in the box, this isn't attached here, so you have to attach the turbo brush and the holder yourself and it just clips on. Got one lug there, one lug there and uh, basically there's two holes and it fits over those lugs like so. You can either, either have it on the front of the handle or you can turn that round and uh, I would say you could probably have it in the back as well but I think it's best on the front. Looks better. The wand is fully detachable you press that button down and um, lift that out. It's a polypropylene plastic wand. Fairly, it's fairly pliable, but uh, I would say it's fair, still fairly robust. It has the extension in the end, like so, which you can just plug in here to lengthen the wand. And again, this is uh, being carried on with some of the newer machines that Vax have brought out. I do actually like this design. It's very, very, very handy. So it's, effectively it's like having a telescopic tube, but not quite. So then you can put your turbo brush on the end of here, or the multi-tool, and use it like that. So yes, it's very handy. Even if the colour scheme might not appeal to everyone. So that fits back together like that. And clicks nicely like that. Turbo tool back on. On the top of the machine you have the on and off switch here. Uh, that's a very good place to have it to be quite honest because a lot of older VAX machines used to put the on and off switch down here on the motor housing and uh, you're forever trying to fiddle around with your feet trying to get that uh, power switch on especially on the old power range. But what they decided to do on this one is to have the on and off switch just here and what it does it operates a uh, push rod that goes down the back of this channel and operates the switch which is actually still in the original place down the bottom here but uh, I do like that design so full marks for that on the back we have the hose now again I like the design of this hose as well this uh, this is much better you have the cuff, which fits onto the floor head here, my friction fit. None of these clips, that, uh, when I think of the, the review I did on the Air 3, it used one of these uh, little orange clips that would clip onto there and it would keep coming off. This one is a lot more secure, it's a friction fit. Hose clip there to hold the hose in position. It's a nice idea there that it comes out low down. So when you're pulling and tugging at it, there's a lot less chance of this tipping over. 
In terms of the length of the hose, it's not a short hose, it's actually a fairly long hose. So it won't reach all the way up the flight of stairs, but it's a good length of hose to have, especially on a machine in that price range. So it's, it's not bad at all. I don't know the exact length of the hose here, but you know it really will stretch out if you pull it hard. So there we go, right up there. And then you can clip your uh, tools onto the end of there. And again, this is a big improvement over the Air 3, is that that is a nice polypropylene joint. It's a nice cuff, that. And you push the tool into the cuff, and it's a good, strong friction fit. So that enables you to use this tool very effectively. So, uh, as most people use it as a, a dusting brush, if you turn that round, then it becomes the dusting brush. And I was very impressed, actually. That's all nice and secure, nice rigid fit, and you can uh, do your dusting with that very well. So, the hose, full marks for that. Great improvement. So that goes into its fitting there, around the back. goes into the clamp on this side and then pushes onto the floor head like that and that's a nice secure fit on there which is also very good okay going on to the bin this is uh, a very very large capacity bin because it's only a single cyclone you don't have a lot of the bin space taken up by the multi-cyclonic separator. What it uses, if I uh, bring it up to the camera, on this machine, is a uh, central inner cyclone chamber, like that, which is very similar to that type that was used on the Power 6, Power 5, Power 7, um, on the cylinder cleaners and it's actually a fairly effective separator although some people have complained about it that have long hair that does uh, larger particles do get trapped in there and I'll be testing that out later I want to put the bag of filth down on the carpet and see how good that actually is but the filter comes off like that top suction relief valve in there which seems to be more commonplace on vaxes now having it in the lid there nice feature to have because it means that if there's a blockage here this makes an awful noise when it starts to suck here so you know there's something wrong and it also protects the motor as well so it always gets a cooling airflow what we have is the filter in the top like this very easy to get out, pull it out now I've I cleaned all this machine up before the demonstration I don't like to do a demonstration with a dirty machine obviously it's going to be dirty when I put it away but uh, for the purposes of demonstration, I wash that out first, let it all dry, and that's a really, really good filter. Nice and thick. Foam. And I would say that will probably stand up to quite a few washes before that falls to pieces. And again, you can buy these on the VAX website. I think they're about £20 for that. And I think you might get the exhaust filter as part of that kit. It's a type type 70 filter kit, so they say. This is the separator, which you can take out the top of the bin, like so. And uh, what it basically is, is a small miniature cyclone chamber, which fits inside the big cyclone chamber. So your dirt comes in through the side of here, like that, enters the cyclone chamber from the bottom, and uh, it's spun round inside here and then it exits from that hole in the top. So the centrifugal force of here will stop the uh, dust being drawn in, that's the idea. And then it comes out the top and falls down into the bin. I actually quite like that design. It's very simple. And what's even better about it is it comes apart very easily like so. And it's such an easy thing to wash. Okay, you, you do need to maintain it more. 
but at the end of the day, I think that's actually a very good design. I do like the way that's been done. And uh, that just reassembles like that, and it easily pushes back inside there. It will only go in one way. They put little uh, cutouts there and little lugs on the side to make sure that you can't put, you can't go putting it in wrong because if you put it in wrong, your cyclone won't work properly. So that this has to go like that, where that lug engages that recess there, which makes sure that the entrance to the inner cyclone corresponds to the en the entrance on the side of the canister. And then the filter gets pushed back into the top, like that. Nice snug fit in there, proper rubber all the way around the outside, so it's properly sealed. And the uh, top goes back on, again, bayonet style. Put it on, turn it and click locate, like so many other Vax machines. To empty it, open the bottom up simply like that. Uh, unless you let it get really full, I can't see with this one, and I never had the problem when I was testing it out, is with the dirt getting jammed inside, that will always empty every time. What you will find over time is that the dirt, the dust, thickly builds up all the way all around this uh, inner cyclone assembly. So it doesn't hurt to very uh, frequently. Well, not so frequently, it depends on how often you want to do it, but uh, just take that out and wash it under the tap, get it all nice and clean. That machine was filthy, but it cleans up. Brilliant. So it looks like new again. It looks like this machine has never been used, but it has. I've used this a fair bit. I always like to use the machine a lot when I first get it, so that I can get an idea of uh, how effective it is and how long the filters will take before they need to be cleaned. And so far with this one, uh, it wasn't too bad at all top filter does get dirty but I would say if you washed it once a month that's adequate 12 times a year that's you know it's one of the prices that you have to pay with a bagless machine it's uh, you have to clean filters and if you don't you end up paying for it because the machine will uh, be wrecked and you won't get any suction so that's the canister underneath the canister same uh, setup again on this one twist it and remove and you'll find inside here is a standard exhaust filter on this machine it's not a HEPA filter all it is is a piece of foam inside the uh, or what's basically a little holder that again is very easy you just wash that out under the tap let it dry and uh, reassemble it in there what it also does, being a thick uh, sponge filter like, it, uh, it drowns out a lot of the motor noise and actually finds that this machine is not a noisy machine. It's actually quite a uh, reasonable uh, noise. Some machines I find have a very uh, loud ear piercing motor, this doesn't. In fact, the uh, first, th first time I started it up, I actually thought it sounded more like a hover mower than a vacuum cleaner. And uh, when I demonstrate it in a bit, You'll see what I mean, because it has a slow start motor, it gradually builds up the speed of the motor, and it's like when you're using a hover mower on the, uh, on the grass. Just as those start up, that's what this sounds like. So that goes back in there, cover goes on, clicks in there. They provide all full instructions on the back of here, of the type of filter kit you need, exactly how you clean the filters out, now, the VACs really are improving a lot on what they used to be like. You know, in the olden days, they'd provide terrible instructions. You'd have to go online to look everything up. The uh, instruction booklets were very bland. But now, the instruction books that you get with them are a lot more, they're a lot more user-friendly. Got lots of little pictures and handy hints. There's a picture of some guy on there with a little notice board on his chest with all these handy tips that comes up a lot. Whether that's Dan from Vax, I don't know. This is the man that uh, has to respond to people's moans and groans on the websites. There we go. That goes back on there. It clips in. 
keep that nice and secure. Underneath the machine, you have nice big wheels. And they are, I didn't have to oil these, they were fine as it came out, so that's an improvement. But nice uh, metal axle on there, nice quality wheels. ABS plastic on there, so it's nice and tough. I think it's ABS anyway. I know that's polypropylene because it's got a lot more pl uh, pliability in there. But I think this is ABS, they still use that. It's not ideal when it gets sun baked and old, it tends to get brittle, but uh, time will tell how long these last. On the bottom, you have your height selector. It is, it's got three settings on. Hard floor, high carpet, and low carpet. So, that's the lowest setting that will go on, low carpet. You've got a setting stop in between, in midway, midway between the two, which hasn't got a, uh, it hasn't got a definition on it. Then you go another click to high carpet, then you can go around again, and then hard floor is the top one. Now what I found with this machine is that uh, very similar to the Hoover Turbo Power Cyclonic, is that if you, if you don't have this uh, set right, it's a nightmare to push it. Um, and I've seen the complaints on the website about this as well, saying that it's hard to push around. Yes it is, if you don't have this set properly. So what I tend to find is that it will work midway between the two. You've got the low carpet setting here and the high carpet there, and if you put it halfway in between, it works absolutely wonderful on the uh, cut pile carpet like I have here. The fact that it's hard to push basically is because on this one it creates a lot of suction and this pulls the sole plates. There's no bleed valves, uh, no bleed channels or anything on the on this sole plate, so that the full suction is drawn through the sole plate straight to the carpet, and that's what makes them hard to push. So you need to have that uh, carpet height selector set correctly in order to make it a lot easier to uh, to move around. Now, the brush on the bottom. If I just come up to the camera with it. So I realise this camera's not very wonderful now at uh, doing distant shots. Learning as I go along, putting these videos on. What we've got here is a nice full-size brush roll there. And uh, you can still see the dirt on there because I don't tend to uh, clean the brush rolls out. I'll do the bin and that, but I, um, I won't get all this to pieces because it's only going to get dirty again. The um, brushes on there, they're not overly hard and they're not overly soft, they're like a medium length. Um, this does leave lines in the carpet as well because you do have gaps in the brush roll there. You'll get a bunch of brushes here and then there'll be no brush for that distance between there and there because of these sole plate guards. I think what these are for is to stop the carpet and that being sucked up into the nozzle. They're like a safety feature. Um, so you've got these these banks of bristles and then a gap and when you're doing the carpet you can notice that as you're going along you see these lines because of this type of brush roll but it nevertheless does a good job anyway because you're overlapping your strokes and you're moving it from side to side and uh, yes it will pick up well and I will be doing the demo on it in, uh, in a bit while putting the dirt down you've got your uh, pile adjustment height wheels here um, I've never had to change the belt on this. I don't know at the moment exactly how to do it. I think uh, they do provide instructions though on how to change the belt. It's not one thing I actually looked into on this, but it looks a uh, fairly complicated affair to do the belt on one of these. Uh, it looks like you have to undo one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, there's a lot of screws underneath here, so if the belt does go, uh, I wouldn't be sure how easy it was to replace that and I think it is only a stretch belt rather than a tough belt in there. Facts again they tell you on the back of here what belt it uses and go to their website and it will have there on the accessories. But yes that's the underside of the machine. With the plastic there, I don't know what that is whether that's polypropylene or whether it's ABS. I think this hood is made of ABS and this is made of polypropylene. 
uh, which is good because ABS does get brittle and a polypropylene base is more robust. It's a little bit softer, a little bit more pliable, but it's a lot more robust. So, let's put that down. So that's the, uh, the details of the machine there. It, it rolls along nice and easily on those uh, back wheels. To put the floor head down, you put your foot on the front there and recline it. And it will uh, move nicely along there. You won't be able to lie it flat to the floor. It will only go down as far as that before it starts to lift the brush roll off. And the reason for that, of course, this hose here comes down very low and it will stop it going flat to the floor. But uh, unless you need to get underneath chairs or underneath low furniture, then that shouldn't really matter too much. And a lot of people actually prefer to be able to do that to get down low, to get over thresholds and tassels on rugs so that the brush roll doesn't chew them up. Okay, so what we'll do, we'll plug it in, put some dirt down, and see how it performs. Let's pop it over here, out of the way. I'll get my uh, dirty, dirty, dirty dirt. Again, as in one of my other videos there, this is all saved up from previous demonstrations. All the same dirt, recycled, all bits of grit and everything in there. So, basically, that's uh, going to put it to the test. And we'll just uh, grind that in. All bits of cat litter, stones, fluff, cat hair. Basically, it's all here. Like so. And uh, let's see how well it performs. Now when I start it up, you'll notice what I mean about the slow start motor, because uh, it starts off slow and then ramps the speed up gradually.
So there we go, that has cleaned up beautifully. The brush roll is uh, fairly noisy on the carpet, but when I sit, stand here and uh, look at that, how it's raised the pile, it's done really nicely. When I clean the carpet, I like to go across it in all different directions because of the way the, nap the pile lies. When you've got stuff like that deep down uh, grit and dirt ground in, you need to go over it from several directions. And I can really feel, when I push this along, the pull of that floor head down onto the carpet. I can see the carpet being lifted up by that floor head. It's fantastic suction on this machine. That's why, as I say, you have to have that setting correct on there, because if you don't, you'll never move the machine across the carpet. It's that powerful. It's such hard. So hard onto the carpet. One other thing is that when you're using the uh, attachments and the hose, what tends to happen with this, which is why you saw me picking it up all the time and carrying it round, is because the brush roll can't be switched off. When you're pulling on that hose, what it's doing is putting the front of the machine down onto the carpet. And when it's going onto the carpet, I could hear the brushes rubbing onto the pile. That's one of the problems with this type of machine that you can't turn the brush roll off. If it's not sufficiently lifted off the carpet, then when you're moving the machine around with the hose, the uh, brush roll can scorch the carpet. So you, re you need to be careful with that on this machine. But because it's so light, you can pick it up like this and just carry it around as, you, as you're doing around with the hose, which you can now with several other Vax machines because they're so light and it's not heavy. Once the, hose, once the cable's off, the handle's off and the hose is off it, it's fairly light to carry. So, you know, the, the machine's aimed at women, according to the pack, for busy mums. And yes, it's very easy, it's very light, but you've got to have that uh, carpet height adjustment setting because women are not going to like having to have arm muscles this big to be able to push this along the carpet. Now one other thing I didn't mention was the, uh, the fitting of the hose into the handle on this machine is a hundred times better than what it is on the Air 3. Now when I did my Air 3 uh, review, I said one of the biggest criticisms I had with it was the uh, way that the hose fitted into the handle. Very, very weak design. But on this machine, when I first saw this, I thought, well done Vax, you've listened. That's a much better way of fixing that hose in. To having a lug on there like that, friction fit, and what happens is, on the end of this handle, you've got a little bayonet. So the hose pushes snugly into the end of there and twists around and there is no way that, that is going to get pulled out of that handle. No way at all. That is an absolutely fantastic way of doing that. So I think full marks for that. But there's always a downside. The end of this handle, and I know, I've noticed people complain about this, can be quite sharp. Because if you don't have it on the right setting, push it along, you do need to put quite a lot of effort on the handle to be able to move the machine along. And when it's plugged in like that, you tend to find that you're putting more effort on the back of it here to push the machine. And this, this part, the handle, is quite sharp. Well, it, well it, not really it isn't, but some people have said it is. And I've noticed it myself, if I'm having to push, push the machine along using the palm of my hand on there, after a while, you can start to notice it digging in. So, you know, what, it would, what would have been better on there is to have some kind of rubber grip on that handle so that you're not slipping backwards and forwards on it. But then again, you see, back, Vax have listened again. And on the new models, on the, um, I think it's the floor to floor, you have, I don't know whether it's still down here or not at the moment, No, it's back upstairs again. Um, but basically, they've changed the type of handle so that the handle is vertical all the way up and then it has a dedicated comfort handle on the front. So I think they do listen 
to when people make suggestions. The host connection on the Air 3 was hopeless, and they've modified it on the data machines, made it much better like that, so that it goes in there, lovely. People complained about this not being finished off very well, and so they did something about that. Um, so yeah, I, I think they are improving, genuinely improving as a company. And this machine, for a budget cleaner, for the money it costs, it's not a bad machine at all. So if we just have a look at the bin, take that off there now so it doesn't tip over again. The uh, inner cyclone chamber here, nice and dirty as you can see that. Now what happens is that gets absolutely filthy over time, all over that inner cyclone chamber there. You can see the way the dirt comes round and settles on the, the inside of the chamber there. That's not a problem at all, not a problem. It shows you that the, the amount of dust that this actually picks up. And there again you can see all the heavy dirt in the bottom of the bin there. And when you press that bin latch, there's nothing at all that's going to obstruct all that dirt just dropping straight out the bottom. So that is a fairly good design as well. They've made the single cyclone system very simple in the top of here so it can be cleaned easily. The one drawback is that uh, you will have to clean this filter more often because you can see the dirt on there already just from that little demonstration. You can see on my finger there, the fine dirt. That was cleaned before. But it's not people don't normally go and plough a vacuum through that much dirt in one go. And I think that it's actually done very well to cope with that. Using a single cyclone like this. Single cyclone, all that dirt, and it's done very well. That's what I'm concerned. That's all I'd want from a machine of this price. You can wash that filter very easily. There, is, there really is no excuse for not looking after these. Because uh, I think if you do, they will last. Let's push that back in. And again, I said earlier, you can uh, take all that out, like so. So when you get all the dirt build up around there, that's very easy to clean. You know, it, it's, I, do, I really do like the design of this. For a single cyclonic separator, it's actually very good. And that just fits back on. And there you can see the dirt all inside there. And where it's, where it's got to be clean, inside here, because this is the air suction channel, it goes down to the motor. It's clean inside there. Very, very little amount of dust. And we'll just check on the exhaust filter, just to see if anything did get through. Clean as a whistle. The only thing that should ever be on there is a black, black dust, really, and a very, very fine layer of dust that does actually get through this filter. So as far as I'm concerned, the filtration on this machine is perfectly adequate for the money you're paying for it. Let's just reassemble it all again. machine. They are a fair distance apart. They're big enough to be able to hold the amount of cable the machine has. Because this is a problem on a lot of machines. Now the cable length is getting longer than standard. Is that a lot of these stowage areas will not hold the amount of cable that they give the machine. I don't know what, what this would be like on the reach model, because that actually has a long cable. But all I know is that uh, on this one, as long as you wind it round properly, like so, 
clip it on at the bottom. It fits beautifully. And that's ready to be put away now, like that. So that zoom in the lovely Blumange pink. They did not choose their colours, I'll say that much. How is a bloke supposed to be able to use that kind of machine? It's a pet machine for pets, okay, and I've got a cat, <laughs> and it's lurid pink. Really, that, that is a, a, that's a ladies' vacuum cleaner, that is, and that's selecting that statement is for ladies only. But ladies, like I said, they like nice, easy vacuums to push around. So if you're watching this video, you know how to do it. Make sure that adjustment's right, and you'll be absolutely fine. So for the money you're paying, and currently these are on sale for about £59.99 in Argos, this machine, even though it's got a, the handle is slightly rough on the top there, this I'm going to give 9 out of 10. And, I, and I'm, I'm a very, very critical reviewer. I go into fine detail about everything. I inspect everything on the cleaner to see how well it works. Nothing escapes my eagle eye. And uh, all the vacuums that I've had and reviewed and, and, and owned, I've had some pretty bad ones, and I've just sold them on again. Um, but I do tend to keep a lot of them. And this, the VAT Zoom, I love it. It's, it's a fantastic little machine for the money. It gets, it gets a lot of negative reviews, this machine does on Argos. And I think uh, a lot of them are quite unfair. I give negative reviews where I have to, but if something's good, I'll say it's good. Vacs aren't paying me, they're not sending me free machines to get reviews. I have to pay for every one of these. I usually get them um, at reduced prices, and I'll wait for them to be in the sale, so that I can spend as minimum amount of money as possible. And I'll get them over a period of time, as and when they come out, and when they get cheap. But uh, no, that, that's, a, that's a great machine for the money. Highly recommend this. Okay, it's not everyone's uh, cup of tea, the colour. But there are other colours in the range. You can get a purple one and a sky blue one. As I say, they used to do the green one, but that uh, you can still get those on eBay. Because what happens is people buy these machines, they decide they don't like them, they send them back, and then they pay on eBay for or even cheaper prices still. So you can pick one of these up reconditioned as a, a graded model factory seconds, whatever have you, what they don't call it, and they're selling these off for 20 odd 30 pounds. You can't beat that at the end of the day. Even at full price, 60 pounds. They're excellent. So, I'll talk no more on this one because I do tend to talk rather a lot. But uh, from me, the Vac Zoom Pet, that's now full of dirt and I've got to clean out again. I'll say goodbye and uh, speak again on the next review.